I'm going to make that appointment for you. Uh, you, you, you know, uh, if you don't go, I'm going to call the doctor. Am I telling you that's the way it is. Uh, we spend money on cars, computers, holidays, houses, gizmos and gadgets, but we don't spend money on ourselves when it comes to our, our health. You know, and let me just say that black men in particular need to be aware that uh, prostate cancer, they say that we are part of that uh, population, that, that group in the population that are more endangered than other groups. And so um, I decided that I would make these uh, biannual visits to, the, to get my checkup every two years, you know, because that's what the policy said. And so when I was pastoring in South Africa, um, I called the conference and I said, listen, I, every two years I go for a medical checkup, so it's my time. And they said, okay. So I went for the medical checkup. And when I went back for the results, the doctor said, listen, um, you, you've got uh, enlarged PSA. You've got a raised PSA level here. We're very concerned, especially for your age. You're too young to be showing this kind of uh, level. So we're going to send you off to uh, get this checked out further. And I have to say to you at the time, I, I'd never heard the term PSA before, you know, prostate specific antigen, never heard of it. Uh, so I'm in the dark. The doctor says, I'm going to send you uh, to the urologist to get this checked out. So I went off to the urologist and uh, he did a scan, uh, told me that the prostate was indeed enlarged. He would need to do a biopsy to find out what was, uh, what was going on there, you know. And so I went and had the biopsy he said it's not cancerous uh, but we're going to put you on on medication and so the following morning after taking one of these tablets man it, it felt like somebody had kicked me in the rear you know i could just about walk and i said well if this tablet has done that to me in one night i ain't taking them i'm just not interested so i began to look for a another alternative went on the internet and i found this product called sorpimento and so I began taking the Sorpimento. And remember, I'm in South Africa, so I had to order it to England and then get somebody to come when they're coming over, pick it up for me. So that's what I did. Began taking the Sorpimento. And when I went back to the doctor after six weeks, he did the scan and he said, well, the, 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 the um, prostate has gone down. I see you've been taking the medication. And I said, no. He said, what you've been doing? I said, well, I've been using Sorpimento. And he said, oh, yes, yes, I know it. You know, so he knew of the natural remedy, but he wasn't going to recommend it. And so, but over the years, uh, there were other things that I began to do. I, I found out that licorice root uh, is very good for the enlarged prostate. Corn silk, very good for uh, enlarged prostate. Uh, nettle root, uh, but... The, you, you know, the, the thing that I found, and I should say this to you, that has been very, very good is the pumpkin seed. And I was just in this course that I'm doing, I, it just jumped out at me. It said, Romanians do not suffer much with prostate problems. That's because they are snacking on pumpkin seeds all the time. And so the zinc in the pumpkin seeds presents testosterone from turning into dihydrotestosterone. So Guys, I'm saying every one of us ought to be going through on a regular basis, getting yourself uh, checked out, making sure that um, you know, you're in good health. I have a good friend of mine who died some years ago, and I'm going to tell you the reason why he died. He was, uh, he was a, an electrician, busy guy, just going about doing, uh, doing his work and so on. Never had to go to the doctors and so on. But when problems did develop, and he went to the doctor, they told him that he had prostate cancer and it had already metastasized to the bone. Too late. You know, I was fortunate that uh, because I was doing these regular checkups, we were able to find the, 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 the problem with me and uh, I was able to deal with it you know, rather than it escalating into a major problem. So pumpkin seed, I highly recommend it. 
just um, you, you grind it up, put it on your cereal, put it in your porridge, uh, put it on your spring, sprinkle it on your salad. Uh, but this is um, a very, very good remedy uh, for you to uh, be using. And then, you know, uh, my lifestyle changed. Here I am uh, in 2015 on the left. Uh, you know, I went through to a lifestyle center once I decided to take early retirement, or just before I took early retirement, went through to a lifestyle center and they put me on a detox program. Now, when I went through to the, the lifestyle center, guys, um, I had sleep apnea, I was suffering with hay fever, the doctor told me that I had heart disease, I had an enlarged prostate, uh, that I was obese, there were so many things going on. In fact, back, if I back up a little and say, whenever I did these, uh, I went through for the medical every two years, they were telling me about the obesity problem. You, you know, you are uh, you're obese, you're largely obese, you need to sort it out. And I'm saying, yeah, 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 but never did. And so when I arrived at the lifestyle center, you know, the doctor, the thing that jumped out at me was the heart disease. Never knew that, didn't, didn't think it, although there were signs in my body that things were going wrong. And we went on a detox program. The detox was using the um, isotonic cleanse, that's the salt water, uh, just cleansing the colon, uh, having the blood cleanse, the liver cleanse, the kidney cleanse, the parasite cleanse, went through all of this. And within four days, within four days, my wife said to me, your sleep apnea is gone. When I came back to England, dispensed with the CPAP that I was having to wear, my wife said, the, C the, the, the uh, sleep apnea is gone. Then I discovered that the hay fever was gone, you know, and so all of these. And then the, the, the image that you see, beloved, you know, um, let me just try back up here with me on the right. Within four months, I had lost. Uh, almost five stones in weight uh, just by, by changing my lifestyle. Uh, you know, so we can do the same. Uh, so a lot of the diseases, things that I was suffering from, uh, uh, I've been able to reverse them simply through lifestyle change. And so how did I do that? Um, recognize that I needed to make a change in my life. So the nutritional change, came. So removal of all processed foods. I removed all fats uh, from the diet, sugar from my diet. You know, all of these things went forced, all the false vegetarian foods. Uh, we were, I was eating a lot more raw foods, no fried foods. Just took out all of those things uh, from my diet in order to uh, be healthy. And then, um, you know, you may thinking, be thinking that uh, I was doing a lot of running and a lot of exercises, just 45 minutes walk per day. That's all I was doing. There was one, uh, one time where I was walking for uh, one and a half hours. So I do 45 minutes in the morning and then another 45 minutes in the, in the evening. But that was the sum total of my exercise. I love to play badminton and where the opportunity provide, presented itself, I would play badminton. But my nutritional change was that I, um, I also was only having two meals a day. So I would have breakfast at eight o'clock, lunch at two o'clock, and that was the sum total of my meal for the day. Um, I would also fast twice a week, so f fast for two days a week. So um, my last meal would be on Thursday evening, and I wouldn't eat again until Sabbath lunchtime. You know, so Saturday afternoon, uh, when we went to church, you know, that's the big meal. <laughs> that's, the, that's the one, you know, we, we enjoy uh, the fellowship meal. So that's when I would uh, eat again. And that really helped to, uh, me with the, the weight loss. And then, of course, I went from uh, drinking all the, other, all the things that I would drink. And I, I must say to you, I wasn't drinking a lot of uh, sweet fizzy drinks or anything like that. Um, super malt, yes. I uh, love super malt, but everything went, everything went just back to water. I, I, if ever I had a cup of tea, would have to have sugar in it. So the tea went, you know, so I'm just having water uh, simply, you know, and the benefits of water is just tremendous. And um, 
I wasn't, I'd stopped drinking with meals. So one of the reasons guys, or we, you know, this phrase comes in well fed, but malnourished is that the hydrochloric acid within our stomach, when we're drinking with our meals, we dilute that acid. And so you, you compromise your ability to digest the food as efficiently as you should. So we should not be drinking with our meals. And I just cut that out uh, uh, in, in my lifestyle change. Sunshine, you know, black folk, we need the vitamin D3. And somebody sent me a uh, WhatsApp message this week, this week gone. And he was saying to me, the reason why so many black folk are suffering, are dying from COVID is because we need the vitamin three. And in the UK, we're just not getting that sunshine. So I've got vitamin three supplements. You need to be taking vitamin three, D3 supplement to just to boost that immune system to protect yourself because, because of the, uh, our skin color, the melanin in our skin, we need to be having uh, that extra supplement of D3. So just remember, remember that sunshine is so important to our health. And then temperance, we've got to deny ourselves. There are things that we love to eat, things that we want to eat, things that uh, appeal to the, to the appetite. But, you know, in my change, I had to deny myself. So uh, cheese, I used to love cheese. I used to go to church potluck and I could hear that macaroni cheese calling to me, you know, and that's where I would, I, I would cave in, I would give up because the mac, the mac cheese got me, man. <laughs> Oh, um, but I gave up all of those things. You know, I just decided it's gone. And so temperance, you gotta, you got, just got to be prepared to do it. And then the fresh air, so important to our well-being. And uh, rest, doing all the helpful things, guys. Let me say this. You may do all the helpful things, but if you're going to bed one o'clock and two o'clock in the morning, you're going to get sick. You know, you are compromising your immune system sleep six to seven hours eight hours sleep a night is so crucial to our immune system so it's a package you've got to be taking care making sure that you um you get your sufficient rest I'm, i mean i'm writing my dissertation right now but i can tell you that every night by nine o'clock ten o'clock i'm in bed i'd rather get up early in the morning i'm up at 5 a.m in the morning sometimes i'm up at four but i make sure that i'm in bed uh, by 10 or in fact every night is before 10 we, we're doing our family worship and then we go off to bed and I, I'm up early in the morning and I highly recommend that and then of course trust in God and so beloveds unfortunately I'm not able to stay with you but the subject that I've spoken to you on uh, this afternoon uh, any one of the panel if you've got uh, questions to ask uh, about the prostate issue, uh, about um, being, making sure that you tap into some kind of facility where you're getting yourself checked out every two years. If you're over um, 40, every two years you should be getting a medical checkup. Uh, don't let your wife have to tell you you must go to the doctor. You know, the doctors uh, will diagnose. I was very blessed where I was living in London, where if I had to go to the doctor, they would say, okay, let me send you for an x-ray, let me send you for a scan and so on. Sometimes you've got to fight with your doctor for these things. I was fortunate, I didn't have to. But uh, make sure you spend a little money on yourself. Uh, we, we spend money on the car every year, getting the MOT. We spend money for this, we spend money for that. Put some money on yourself because I was fortunate that my prostate problems was diagnosed early so that I was able to do it. Many guys leave it until that PSA is through the roof and it's too late. So may God bless you, may you prosper and be in health. Thank you so much, Edward, for this opportunity on the platform. And um, guys, I'm sorry that I won't... Man, so, this is actually my cool. Well, well. Okay, thanks. Well. Thanks very much, um, Sam. That was that was very very good. Um, I wasn't as fortunate as you, but I'll probably explain that sometime during the program. That uh, my prostate did get out of hand, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. I had to have a um, medical procedure mm -hmm. in the end. 
Oh, made to be. Uh, I'm, still undergoing, I'm still undergoing treatment now. If I if I'd have met you probably um two or three years ago, I probably I probably would have been a lot better than, than, than I am now. So um thank you very much. Um yeah, very wise of you. God bless you. Can we just ask that person to the homes? Can I ask somebody the yeah, there's a somebody disturbing the meeting? Yeah, good. Come on, I'm okay. Thank you very much. Yes, right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for um, for that, Sam. Right, we move on now, and um, our main speaker um, for the day will be um, um, Jason Williams, who will be giving the main presentation. Before I ask Jason to begin his presentation, please, once more, can I ask you all to mute your mics, please? Unless you're speaking as the host, um, please mute your mic. If you want to ask a question or make a comment, please use the chat facilities or the facility to raise your hand at the end of the presentation. Last week, there were a lot of queries about accessing um, consultations, and later on, we will inform you of how you can do that. Jason and the team will tell you how you can access um, consultation with them um, after the um, presentation. So we are half an hour in, so without any further ado, I would like to ask Jason. Are you there, Jason? Yes, he is. I'm just asking um, our technical person here to just allow him to share his screen. Right. Okay, Jason, thanks very much for joining us today and um, over to you. I hope that your reception is good today. It looks as though you're inside, you're indoors. So I'm sure that we'll all, um, we'll all be able to, um, to partake um, um, without any interruption. So without any further ado, Jason, take it away, please. Thank you very much. Hello, good day, everyone. Can, can, I, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'm just trying to get my uh, my screen up here. Uh, all right. Let me see how this works. Never done it before. Uh, okay. Anyway, look. Before I go there, let me just say um, welcome and good afternoon to everybody. Uh, my name is Jason Jason Williams. I'm coming all the way from South Africa today. Uh, KwaZulu Natal. Um, the, 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 for most of us who are outside of South Africa, especially from the, the Western Indian community, the most you you the, the, the best I can describe to you where I'm at. Have you ever meet, seen that movie? You remember when we were young in Jamaica, they used to show a movie called Shaka Zulu. You remember that? Ah, uh, right. I mean, I'm in Zulu country. That I'm in that area of the, the world right now where the legend of Shaka Zulu is very real. And so um I'd like to see in the place where the movie was made or where it was made from. Um, and it's wonderful here in South Africa, beautiful weather. Uh, South Africa's winter um, <laughs> is nothing like winter that we know. Um, the winter here is, is very much our summer in England. <laughs> it's pretty nice outside and the, the chill is just perfect. It's wonderful weather really. And so it's, all, it's a good environment to 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 live in I, I'm, I'm experiencing it of course um currently you all know the covid 19 issue it's got everybody somewhat restricted from what we can do and where you can go um that's a that's that's slowed down things a bit uh, though it's allowed us to hit the re button on many levels but um you know we 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 are still mindful that we are in such a time um today I want to share with you a little bit more about um, men's health. Um, for those of you, the first time you're coming on today, last week, just to quickly recap, I don't know if you've done that before, um, Mr. Edward. Uh, I don't know if, did you recap from last week? No? All right. So, um, can, I, can you hear me, everyone? Sorry, I've just Sorry, I'm just, um, take you off mute, Edward. So you can go ahead and reply to Jason. 
Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Jess. Like I said we we did sort of um, tell everybody what we covered last week, but I didn't go into any details. So if you like to run through from where we left off last week and just recapping it, then that that would be quite helpful. All right. Um, so last week, for those of you who are it's your first time, um, last week the presentation was done by Brother Noel. Um, Noel Fender is on there, also my very good friend. Um, he spoke about diseases, the mother of diseases, which was primarily colon, but he spoke of the process, which was one disease, two windows, um, two cars, and eight windows. And he explained to us that the, the, no matter what the disease is, is the cell, it's a cell that malfunction that causes the change within that system or within that body part. And then he moved and said, there's two things that can influence the change, both positive and negative, is to do with deficiencies and toxins in your body. And then he went and said, how do you become nutritionally or deficient in whatever? Um, and how do you become toxic? And then he named the eight windows, which was what uh, Pastor Sam, Sam spoke about, which was the eight laws of health, nutrition, exercise, um, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God. Those are the eight windows which you get initially, which cause the disease process to begin, and also, also the same windows you use to reverse a lot of our health condition initially. And that's what he spoke about in a nutshell, and how the colon um, is one of those the system, or the, the, the colon of being a part of the digestive system is, is, is one of the systems that when it becomes clogged, it blocks your system, waste does not come out, and so that will cause all those problems ultimately over time. That's in a nutshell what Brother Noel spoke about. This week, we'll be taking a little bit further. Um, Pastor, I kind of picked up on the end of what he was speaking about. He introduced himself and his experience briefly um, in how he is, you know, he came to his reckoning or how he changed his lifestyle and so on and so forth. And how, um, I don't know what he was saying about cancer, but I did mention hear him talk about prostate issues, which I will be focusing on today. Um, but namely, we are going to be talking about cancer and how it affects men in general. That's what we'll be talking about. Okay. Um, it's a big subject. I'm going to try and do as much as I can um, in terms of getting the information to you. Um, so I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a medical doctor. I am a certified natural health practitioner, professional. Um, I've been doing this work for a long time now. Um, I, I have opened up a clinic in South Africa. Um, it's called Kwam Klemani Institute of Wellness. Um, Kwam Klemani means, in simple way, in an English word, it means abundant health. That's the Zulu word, um, the local word for abundant health. It means fit, healthy, strong, vibrant health. That's what Kwam Klemani means. I know most of you can't say that. If I say Kwam Klemani, that click is a, is a unique thing within the South African language, um, but that's what that word means. Um, I opened this place up in 2016. Um, since then, we have been dealing with, whoa, you name it, a vast variety of many different diseases, so much. We have seen folks, men, women, children, old, young, um, people from South Africa, from outside, they all come here. It's a home style clinic sanitarium. Uh, what that is, so you understand a little bit more, I'm sharing with you so you understand my background, where I'm coming from, both with experience um, and so on, is that we have a place here where we have one, two, three, four, we have six beds. We have six beds where we can take in people who are sick, patients. We admit them. Um, we keep them for duration, normally a minimum of 10 days, but we have kept people here for up to um, 70 odd days, 50 odd days, depending on their condition. Um, we have kept them until we see a path for them in terms of their condition changing and so on and so forth. Um, again, we've been doing this since 2016. Um, we have a part of my team, we, we have a team of, of, of therapists and medical doctors. 
initially I started off with one doctor um, who was a male. Uh, he was, he's, he's no longer working with me directly, but we work together still nonetheless. Now we have with me Dr. Um, Kamosa, which is a female. Uh, she works here. She's a resident physician full time. So we have a medical doctor on site pretty much all the time. And then we have the therapist, uh, the therapeutic team, which does all the different things from the treatment in the ozone, the specialized sauna treatment, the massages, the pain management, all the different techniques in how to treat the body or heal the body or help the body rather, because we cannot heal the body, help the body to do its process. So we have a team. It, when, it, when I count them all together, it's about seven of us that runs this place. And um, we also do trainings. We also do trainings. We have, we have um, two young men that lives on site. They are in training and they, they learn the health work, but then they also learn how to make their own health products to sustain themselves. When they shall move on from this way and from our center, they should be able to go not only with the technique of helping the sick, but also have their own products to sustain their business or the business model of what they do while they are able to establish themselves. And so that's what we do in a nutshell. Um, we don't specialize in no condition um, as we believe that the disease, the body changes when we have broken the laws of the body. And so we try to reestablish the laws in the system. All right, that's pretty much what I do. I've worked in the island of Grenada. I've worked there in the UK. Um, um, I've worked in the Caribbean islands. Um, outside of Grenada, I've done work in, 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 in uh, Trinidad, all these little islands, St. Thomas, a lot of them, Canada, USA, I've been there, done a lot of work in South Africa, the, the, the country. So I've been doing this work since I was about 25, um, became more intense when I was 30, and now I'm in my 40s, so I'm, I've been doing it for a while. Um, but, you know, quite a little bit of experience as God has given me the privilege to do so in regards to helping people along the way. Um, today, I want to share some of that experience with you, and hopefully, by God's grace, it will bring us into better health. Okay. All right. Um, let me go to my, see if I can pull up the slides. Um, before I go any further, do we have any questions or any comments before I move on? Um. Just one thing before anyone have anything to say, Jason, just to let you know that you are able to share your screen if you, um, if you'd like to do so. Me, right? Yes. yes. All right. Let me, let me see if I have it now. Uh -huh. I think I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. Somewhere here. Yeah, you are there. Are you seeing my screen? Yes, I am. Okay, it's coming up on my screen. I can't see it just yet, but let me, so I can, I can work through it. Okay, all right. Anybody else have any other comments or any question according to what I've said thus far? All right. All right. Hi, Jay. Any, anybody? Yes. Yes, uh, can you please, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Can you please share the recording after the session? Okay. The presentation. Yes, please. Yes, okay. no problem. I will. I will no. hand that over. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Any other comments? Any question before I go? All right. Yes, I have a question. Yes, go ahead, sir. What are the most common problems that you have experienced during the years across the globe? What? Um. Most, most common, I'm going to talk about men first, right? Most common problem amongst men is, is, is always the normal back pain. You know, the lower back pain. All of, most of us men have experienced it somewhere along the line, including myself. Um, sciatica sometimes is, is related to long-term injury. Most of the time is sciatica. I, I remember especially working in, in um, Grenada. I, did, I worked in Grenada for about four years, and that was one of the number one issues that I used to come come across with men. The general, it, they back lock up because of the sciatic nerve that's so inflamed, they can't move around. That, that is one of the main problems. In terms of number, that's one of the biggest problems I come across with men. With men. Mm -hmm. Second is the cancers. 
Um, Jason, um, would you be able to go ahead with the presentation and then we'll deal with any question relating to um, any diseases? I thought, you know, the question people was going to ask it was kind of relating to what you're doing in South Africa. Okay, no problem. I can do that. All right. If there's no further um, comments or question in regards to what I've spoken about before, then let me go into the presentation. All right. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Um, so today our topic, our topic is to do with cancer affecting men, cancer affecting men. Um, as I said briefly just now, based on the question, um, you know, second in line uh, with the, you know, from the normal of back pain was the cancers. In, in, in my experience, cancers have been that thing that has been affecting and people have been coming from all over with it. Now, in our clinic that we have here, we deal with a lot of those issues. Um, prostate cancers, yes, we see them um, at pretty much the later stages when it's at stage four and it has moved to the bones and other organs. That's normally when we see them from our side, um, not in the early stages. Very rare we see cancer patients come here in the early stage. They normally come to us at the latter stage when the doctors say that funny or that um, <laughs> what you don't want to hear, we can't do nothing for you. That's when we see them. Most of the cases that we deal with here pertaining to cancer right across the board is when the doctors have given up um, on, on, on the patients. Um, cancers affecting men um, is quite a few of them. Um, my first, the first, I remember the first month when I opened this clinic, uh, the first man that came through here, there was two of them. They, one had uh, liver cancer that had moved around to the lungs, with metastasized. Um, the other one, he had, um, he had esophageal cancer that is also affecting the liver. Um, and uh, that was our introduction into opening my clinic here. And, you know, God was good. Um, we were able to have really good success. We, we, can, uh, we, we even got it on, on YouTube somewhere where you can go and see the testimonies of these men who um, came by and, you know, they were well. Um, so we thank God for that. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about cancer that's affecting men. Before I, I, I go into, you know, telling us what we can do, I heard Pastor Sammy spoke quite a bit, quite extensive on what you can do. I want to just share with you a little bit more about what is cancer. Let's start from there. What is, what is cancer, okay? Um, cancer, you can see it on your screen, okay? Sometimes I won't stick to the script because I'm hoping that you're reading. I would expand a little bit more than what's on the screen. But cancer is the uncontrolled growth of abnormal cells in the body. Um, typically, what that means, guys, is, is if you get a cut on your hand here, if you get a cut on your hand immediately, Immediately, just me scratching my hand like that, my immune system is saying, let's, let's fix this up because it's microscopic, all right? That feeling that you get, you're scarring your skin. Now, my, my, my immune system is going to heal that scratch. If I, if I get a nail scratch here, just a little scratch with a, with a, with a nail or something or anything, my body is going to automatically heal it, okay? It's going to, the immune system is going to send out the signals and it's going to start closing this year wound up. That's how the body works. Now, imagine if when you get a cut, the signals are sent for it to be healed, but it just keeps healing. You know, you first get the scab on here. Imagine the scab just keep growing and growing and growing and growing. That is now going to cause changes because the control system is now not working. Things have gone wrong. Okay, so cancer develop when the body normal control mechanism stops working. Um, and old uh, cells, they, they, they don't die as they should. All right? Now, that's what happened. But what is caused in that? Um, Pastor Sam spoke briefly about um, sleeping, resting, and immune system. Primarily, primarily, cancer is 
if you making it really simple for you, cancer is the malfunctioning of the immune system. Every day, we as people, because of our environmental factors, our diet, our genetics, whatever, we are exposed to cancer cells in our bodies, all right? Every day. But the immune system, once it is working correctly, it identifies those cells and destroy them, get rid of them, okay? When the immune system is not functioning well, those cancer cells can bypass or get away from it, to make it simple, okay? And then they can, you know, wherever the organ is or whatever, wherever in the body, it stays there and it develops. But it don't just develop. There's stages that even when it starts developing in a particular organ, there's, the body will still try to bring it under control. It's when all of those stages are passed, then you will see it. As you'll see in the picture on the right side of your screen, it says normal cell. You see it's nice and flat and it says cancer cell. It is growing and growing and it won't stop growing. It will just continue to grow because it's no longer a threat to the body. What do I mean? Now, you're probably, huh? Jason, what are you talking about? Okay. When a cancer cells get away in the system like that, what is happening is the immune system is no longer dealing with it for various reasons. One, the immune system failed to stop it. Two, the body going to a second system. Now, what the body does, once the growth start taking place, <clears throat> it, the, the cancer cells, they start developing certain proteins around them, yeah, that it kind of tricks the immune system to thinking that they are not bad cells. So the immune system is looking around and it's not really seeing them as a dangerous cell no more because they've had developed a certain protein around them that doesn't give off the signal like they are dangerous. And so they can grow there. The immune system is seeing them, but the immune system is not detecting them. It's like the enemy. It's like a, a wolf in a sheep clothing. You're not seeing the danger. So the immune system don't pay it no mind. All right. So that's why sometimes when somebody's got a cancer, they do a lot in terms of changing their diet, their lifestyle. But the, unless those cancer cells are revealed to the immune system as a danger, the immune system will not attack them. The minute that that happens, the minute that, and you can, this is where diet comes in, so important, because diet can unveil them. Yes, certain food that you eat can unveil the cancer cells, and then when they unveil, the immune system will launch its attack and just destroy it. That's why I said to you earlier, we cannot cure the body. We, we, can't, we can't heal the body. The body has its own mechanism of healing itself. It is when those systems have gone wrong for whatever reason, then disease grow and take place in the body. Okay, so that's, that's me adding to what's on your screen. Okay, the old cells do not die and instead grow out of control, forming new abnormal cells. These extra cells may form a mass tissue called tumor. So you get a lump, a bump, or something like that. That's what that is. In simplicity, that's what cancer is, okay? So that is what cancer is right across the board. It could be a blood condition as well. It could be a blood condition where you, you have cancer of the blood. It's called leukemia. It could be a blood condition where you don't see a, a cell growing, but a tumor growing, but the cells are not happening. It's not doing what it's supposed to do. So you have that as well. It's not always a lump or tumor. Now, here, if you have a lump or tumor growing, I didn't put none of my personal pictures on here. They are gross. You don't want to see them. And for those of you who know my presentation, I'm not talking about those old ones with things coming out of your face. And I've got new ones now. They make those ones look like child play. <laughs> and that's the truth. Um, but for most of you, is it, when you see a tumor that's, that's, that's coming out on your face, if you've ever seen a tumor manifest itself on the outside of the body, whether it's in a woman's breast or on a man's thigh or wherever, imagine that growth spur start taking place in a, on an organ inside the body. It's bad enough when you see a tumor growing outside the body. That's probably the safest place for the cancer to grow, though it might not smell right, it might not look right, it might look very gross, very ugly. I've seen cancers huge to rip off people's face like that that looks bad but imagine that process taking no, place inside the body all right so this is this is cancer the, the tumor growth can happen in the body as well as outside the body okay 
now, cancers is affecting men, all right? Um, we're looking at about five different cancers which are known to affect men. Um, number one is prostate. Then you have lungs, colorectal, bladder, and then melanoma, okay? Prostate cancer you heard briefly about. I am going to focus on prostate cancer, all right, like being to... number one. Like this presentation is going to have to be in more than one part. So within this three-part series, this is the first cancer session. Within the second series, we'll go into cancers again and take it to the next level, all right? But today I will focus on prostate cancer because it's number one. Then the next um, series, I will go into another cancer, which is going to be lung cancer, colorectal cancer, and so on and so forth until we go through them. But today, um, prostate cancer, okay? So these are the five cancers that's affecting men. Um, prostate cancer being the number one, um, lung cancer, colorectal cancer, and so on and so forth. So melanoma, for those of you who don't know, is, a, is skin cancer, yeah, to make it um, really simple for you. And cancer means canker. It means canker, mean it's a growth, it's, a, it's an uncontrolled growth. That's what it means. That's what that word's coming from. Um, prostate cancer. Um, for those of you who can see the picture, I'll move my little mouse around. Let me see if I can get it. See, this is the male genital organs or reproductive system. Um, it is done in a dimension so you can see the different uh, organs and where they are placed and where they're located. This little red area here, that's where the prostate is. It's like a walnut sized organ. Okay. It sits just down here under the bladder. Okay. Um, I've, had, I've had the privilege um, because of, um, you know, the doctor I work along with, we do have an ultrasound and um, I've had the privilege to use the ultrasound and look and see how the prostate is shaped and where the bladder is, is wonderful. I mean, there, there's a scripture that says we are fearfully and wonderful made, properly structured, you know, properly put together. No mistake here. Anyway, um, this picture here is kind of showing us where this organ is. The, organ, the prostate is just below the bladder, right? It's right there around the urethra that comes down here. That's where your urine comes up. Let me go back, sorry. All right, so that's the prostate there. And this is the bladder here. This here, this here one is the bladder. Okay. Um, I'll show you briefly on, the, on my, 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 my chart, but I'm, I wanna draw it in case you can't see it. So you got your bladder up here like so. Yeah, then you got a hose, a pipe come down from your bladder. And it runs down here, it comes down here, it comes down here. Now holes end up here, like so. This is where your genital is. It's where your, yeah? Your prostate's gonna sit around here. Okay, that's your prostate right there. So when you have water here, it comes down to this here hose. Mm -hmm. And you urinate here, all right? now. There's many conditions that can affect your prostate. You can damage it. There's inflammation. You have prostatitis. You have enlarged prostate. You have prostate cancer. All right? Uh, there is a level. Now, again, guys, understand that I, I work in the field somewhat. I am not a specialist, um, but I, we, work, we, we work with these conditions somewhat. Um, so I'm not going to tell you what I have learned from book. I'm going to tell you what I know from experience. A lot of it is going to come from experience, OK? Um, some folks, they get, they, they, they have what you call prostatitis. Prostatitis is like this, this here, inflamed. Your prostate glands inflamed. Now that, that inflammation can cause a lot of problem, yeah? It can cause the flow of the, the, the urine to come out. It can actually cause you to have what you call high PSA, prostate-specific antigen. And that is not even cancerous. I'm just talking about conditions that can affect you as a man. Now, when this prostate get inflamed, it becomes what you call enlarged prostate. What typically happens, let me just highlight this section right here. What typically happens, you have the, the holes coming down, right? And so what happens, it gets squeezed. The prostate doesn't swell outwards. The prostate swell inwards. So the holes get squeezed in the process. So, you know, as you can see, on this side, you've got a hole that's coming straight through the prostate. Here, when the prostate is enlarged, it enlarged inwards. Like so, and lock off the fluid, the, the, the urine flow that's coming from the bladder. 
So now you gotta build up going here. And it is very painful. When that happens, you go to the doctor, it will be an emergency. You won't be able to urinate. You go to there and they'll take a hose and they'll push it up there. All right. We have some over there in the in the in the in our treatment room. Okay, they call it a catheter. They'll push the catheter right up through here. Okay, I've seen it being done. It's a long hose, like so long, and they push it right up. It's got a little point. It goes right up here and it goes through the prostate and open up this hole. And the catheter sits there like that, and the water drains out through the host. Okay, that's a catheter. That's when you have a large prostate. Right? Now your, your PSA can go up just by having a large prostate. It doesn't mean you have a cancer. Your PSA could be normal and you have cancer. We have seen it in practice. We have seen it in real life where the PSA is low, but the person's got cancer. Okay, we have seen where the PSA is up, but you don't have cancer. It happens like that. Okay, so prostate specific antigen does not mean you, if you go to the doctor and say your PSA is high, it don't mean, it does not mean you have cancer. Okay, we mustn't confuse it. All right, now, when the prostate is enlarged and it's locking this off, that can cause serious problem. Some of the early signs of this, your urine, you, you know, as a man, you just stand and you urinate and you're shooting all the way over there and you're making aim and you're shooting on a target. You know, as little boys, we do that. When this condition is starting, you're going to be pushing, and this thing ain't going nowhere. It's going to be dropping on your toes. Okay? That's an early sign. Your flow is not as smooth and as forceful as before. It's going to be, you're pushing, and you still ain't getting far. Then you know that there's, a, there's something going on there. That's an early sign, long before you become really sick. So it will happen for years. You will notice it will slow down over time. So some of you right now, you're like, when I was young, I used to push it all over there. Some of you, you're still able to. Some of you right now, if you really check yourself, you're like, but wait, hold on. No, I used to be able to stay here and shoot all the way there. Right now, I'm only able to shoot here with full force. I can't go across that line. Then, you know, you're looking at something right there. Go and get it checked out, as the doctor says. When it is, the, the doctor will do a few tests. Um, they, will, they can stick their finger up there. They can do a blood test. They stick their finger up there. Once they stick their finger up your rectum, on the screen, you will see here, this is the rectum. This is coming down from the colon. You see it? That's the end of the rectum. Anus, right here. Doctor will put their finger up. And when their finger up, the prostate becomes so swollen. You see this little red thing here? It becomes swollen. It literally creates an indentation where the, it literally presses into the colon like this. The prostate presses into the colon. So when you push your foot, you feel a lump in the colon. Right? So you know that. And it, it feels it feels round and smooth. And you know it's an enlarged prostate. When there's cancers there, it doesn't feel round and smooth. It feels rough and rugged and bubbly. You put your finger, not only is it bulging, but it feels bubble, feel rough. Okay? Um, that's when there's a cancer. Without a cancer, they still enlarge, it's just bulging. Now, another thing you can use to check if things are right. When you go to the toilet for number two, if when you look behind you, your feces is coming out like this, it looks like it's been pressed up against something, that, that's an indication that something is happening. Something, it could be your prostate, it could be something further up, but something is squeezing it. And so you're, it's coming out flat or it's coming out really tiny, there's something is wrong. All right, so that's, that's just me talking about enlarged prostate. I haven't gone to the cancer yet, but we're still focusing on the prostate. Okay, so just to recap on the prostate issue. The prostate is just below the bladder, just below the bladder, um, around the ureter where the, the, the urine comes down through, okay, to leave the body. When the prostate is functioning, all is well. But when it gets slightly enlarged or inflamed, it can cause restriction of fluid flow from your bladder, which is going to be very painful, very painful. And also, um, you know, it, it's going to cause some obstruction. It can cause some obstruction in the, in, the, in the bowels as well. All right. So that's to do with enlarged prostate. Okay. Cancer, and remember, high PSA don't mean you have cancer. Okay. It's an inflammation, inflammation, inflammation reaction. It's a reaction. It's, a prostate. it's an antigen that is produced by the prostate. Okay, you can, you can, if you're an overactive 
sexually, you can you can have a high PSA. If you're underactive, you can have a high PSA. It's all to do with what's happening in your body systematically. That's going to cause some changes there. All right. It literally is like a bucket or something with fluid in it that spill over. There's a certain amount of PSA that's supposed to be in the blood. When it's too much, they see that it's too much in the blood. That's all there is. It doesn't mean you have cancer. Okay. Though it can be also uh, one of those symptoms that you have cancer, but it doesn't mean that you have cancer. All right. Okay. Um, um, sorry. Let me go back to my screen. Number one cancer risk for man. Okay. That's what prostate cancer is. It is one of those things that, that most men, as a, the good old pastor was saying, we need to look out for it. Um, when you're 40, 45, and so on, look out, check it, get yourself checked regularly um, to see if things are right. It's, uh, it says here on my screen, you can see it. Number two, cancer kills, it's the number one killer or the, the second killer behind um, lung cancer. Okay, but it's the number one cancer amongst men. So it should give you an idea of how bad this cancer can be. Okay, it kills quite a lot of people about 160 in every 100,000 100, men were diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2017. Okay, the, me the most recent years for which statistics are available and just over 29,000 men died from it, according to the CDC. Now this is a world view of what, so it's, it's one of those cancers that is taking out a lot of people. When I was staying in Grenada, yeah, there was also a high prevalence of prostate cancer. It was very high, a lot of men had it. Um, I, I think at the time when I'd done the research per capita, Grenada was one of the leaders when it came to prostate cancer. Um, when I did my research, I know that they said, uh, oh, it was a lack of sunshine, nutritional deficiencies, and all these things. But when I did my research, it was because, remember, most men in Grenada, if they don't do farming directly, because Grenada is a small country, everybody have their little garden on the side there somewhere. Um, but the pesticides that we're using, the fertilizer, the thing they used to burn, you know, the weed thing, they, yeah, you know what I mean. The thing they spray on the grass to kill it, to make it turn black. Um, that stuff seeps down in the soil. They take out these weeds and then they plant it. Then this, this, the food absorb all this poison. And men were working with the chemical. It was going through their skin and it was lodging in the prostate. Um, how our skin is an integrometry system, meaning it gives off and it takes in. Whatever you put on the outside, your body will absorb. So be careful of chemicals you put on the outside of your body. Men, some of the creams and the lotions we use, the colognes to make us smell fresh and sweet. For those who we want to smell fresh and sweet for, we must be careful because remember, it will affect us internally because your skin absorbs those things. All right? So this is a, few, a little bit of stats. Number one cancer risk for men. All right, it's, it's to do with the prostate. That's the number one. And it is the second um, killer when it comes to cancers behind uh, lung cancer. And lung cancer being prevalent, obviously, you know, you don't have to smoke to get it, but because a lot of men smoke, they get lung cancer. So that, that, that contribute quite a bit. So cancer, I mean, prostate is probably going to be one of the number one killer if you understand how it's, it's, it's presented here. All right. Okay. One in four black men. Coming close to home, most of us on the side here is is from the the black community, whether it's be African um, or West Indian, um, but it also affect um, white people as well, or Caucasian and Indians and so on. It affects it affects men in general. It says one in four black men will get prostate cancer in their lifetime. Black men are most likely to get prostate cancer than other men who have a one in eight chance of getting prostate cancer. You may also be more likely to get prostate cancer as a black man if you are age 45 and over. So check yourself out. Age is a factor and genetics is a factor. All right. Um, one in four is quite a lot. Eh? If you think about it, it's quite a lot. Um, there's many reasons why I will, I will hold for now. I won't explain, but I will talk about it later. Why black people are so expose and what's some of the reasons why we get it apart from you using deodorant and all these things don't worry there's many of the underlying issues that can contribute to it especially within the west indian community there's much more that 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 goes beyond just what you put on your body okay. most men with early prostate cancer okay um 
don't have any symptoms. There's, you don't really, you know, they, look, there are symptoms. There's another presentation that I do. I call it the stages of diseases. There are symptoms. It's just that you don't know what they are. For example, our bodies is designed to give us warning sign. There's no such thing. They call blood pressure the silent killer. Blood pressure is not silent. There's a lot of symptoms before you, 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 you realize you have blood pressure. It's just that what they're saying is that it doesn't give you no direct sign that you have this condition. It's not silent. There's a lot of things. For example, you, you probably not sleeping is a sign that you're, you're having blood pressure. Now, nobody's going to call that a sign of blood pressure. You probably just, um, you know, having, having, you know, not, not headaches or nothing like just, just having emotional changes. That could be blood pressure just going off in your body. The point I'm making is that disease, they always have sign. It's just that if the, light, if the red light on your dashboard, you don't understand what it means when it goes off and then your car blow up, you can't say your car don't say, you didn't understand the sign. That's why your car blew up. So you'll be like, well, why didn't they put a sign saying this thing is happening? Well, it, there was a sign. You didn't understand it. So your body, every time sickness comes, it normally comes with a warning. Lifestyle disease, that is. Of course, you have um, communicable diseases, the viruses and stuff, especially now uh, in this COVID-19 time, we have these communicable diseases that they, they it just need your system to be a bit low. There ain't no sign. Bang! It will just hit you, okay? Even though they is some gentle sign that your immune system is low. Um, but the point I'm making, you know, if it's a lifestyle disease, normally it's accompanied with sign. So most of the symptoms for prostate cancer, you don't really notice them. It develop, it, it can happen if you don't. That's why it's important that you go and get tested regularly um, to see that you're, you're, you're okay or to see if there's a change. If you do have prostate cancer and it is caught early before it causes symptoms, in other words, before the symptoms, according to what they would call symptoms, there's a good chance that treatment could stop the spreading or could stop the progress of the condition and you could bring it under control. Okay, there's a lot of hope when that. But when it, remember, once cancer moves into stage four, it's not child's play no more. It's a serious condition. Um, many would like to claim that it is easy or you can just change your lifestyle. It doesn't work that easy. I, I am telling you. It doesn't work that easy. Me and Doc, we will tell you straight, it doesn't work that easy. You can have, when you, once you hit stage four cancer, there's nothing easy about reversing it. The body is in a funny stage. A lot of things are not working as they should, okay? If you have, if you have stage one, stage two cancer, fine. You just do a little diet change and it changed. When you hit stage four, it ain't no simple, just that nutrition is very important, but there's a big possibility that that alone won't do it. There's a lot more that needs to take place at that stage for you to have an impact on that cancer. Now, staging might be wrong, but when it is a definite, concise diagnosis that you're on stage four, nutrition alone just doesn't reverse it. There's much more. There's nutrition, there's lifestyle, there's herbal, there's supplements, there's deficient. There's so much more that goes with that. And that is where you know, we lose people at that stage because if you don't get to that problem quick enough, the cancer will win this, the, the fight, okay? And so talk, going back to what I was saying, symptoms can go without noticing. It happen easy until you get to about stage four, then you start showing serious signs, okay? So some of these symptoms, prostate cancer um, often occurs without any symptom but symptoms are more likely if the disease is advanced. They include straining to pass urine if you're pushing, but that's not all. Now remember, just because you're pushing don't mean you have it, all right? Just because you're pushing don't mean you have it. It could just mean that you have an enlarged prostate. It doesn't mean that you have it. Leaking, blood in your urine. Now you need to be concerned. As you start getting blood in your urine, do go and get checked out. Now you can get blood in your urine and it's nothing to do with cancer, but if it is happening and not, you, you know, please do go and get it checked out, okay? Um, and bone pain. A lot of folks from experience, again, and I've read it as well in some literature, back pain, man. People get lower back pain. And it's different from sciatica back pain. It's a back pain that goes around here, around the back. Not this one that sciatica pain, it, it's here, but it goes down the leg. But this back pain, it sits here and it's just there. 
it's got a strain around the back, that kind of back pain. If you have any of these symptoms, okay, the straining, the blood and urine, anyone or two or whatever, just go and get checked out to clear yourself. All right. It's very important that we do that. So those are some of the prominent symptoms that we, we, we can have. Some of the risk factors, um, some prostate cancer risk factors, such as race. Again, I said in black people, you know, we have a high prevalence of, of this condition. Uh, it's affecting us. It's affecting us. Um, one of the things is, as you all know, as men, we're busy trying to make it for our family or we're afraid of going to the doctors, especially when it comes to issues like that because of our macho-ness, our muscularity, and so on and so forth. We don't want to seem like, you know, that kind of thing. When we do prostate examination on men, you quickly see men are very funny when you have to put your finger in certain places to become very, you know, that's scary for certain men. You see people go, ooh, they don't like it. But anyway, um, risk factors, family, family history. If you are, if you have known your father or family members who suffered from this condition, then check yourself out. There is something called genetics. Um, and yes, genetics have its triggers, but maybe you have just done what they have done. You, you don't know. So you might have triggered the same genes as them. It's that simple. Um, it, 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 those factors, family and genetics, you, you can't help that. You're genetically made. So you can't change your gene like that. It's either you switch it off or you switch it on, but your genetics are there. It's like you look just like your dad. You can't just, unless you go and do some facial something, plastic surgery, but the point I'm making, genes, they're real. They're not just something in the air, they're real. Okay, however, you may be able to reduce your the risk factors by eating a healthy diet, um, maintain healthy weight and lifestyle and stuff, and don't put some of these harmful chemicals. Sm smoking is a big contributor. Um, and bad diet. Bad diet is a big contributor as well. Um, I'm going to now kind of go freestyle. I've given you enough um, on the screen and a little bit of stats there, so now I'm going to go freestyle. All right. I, I, Jonathan said I shouldn't take questions, but so I'm going to just carry on. So write your questions down. Okay. All right. Now, looking at some of the risk factors, I, I have a good idea of who I'm talking to, the background your background, being African, and Jamaican, West Indian, and some of you from South Africa. I have a very, I have a vast understanding or a reasonable understanding of all those cultures because I've managed to live amongst them and experience their diet and lifestyle. Okay, when it comes to prostate cancer, number one contributor, our lifestyle. We have changed something that is very fundamental to human beings. And that's walking. We don't walk no more. Your prostate gland is, if you, if you look at, if I draw your legs like so, that's one leg, that's other leg, and that's your body up there. Your prostate gland, it comes down in here. It's somewhere here. Yeah? We don't walk no more. We don't exercise our prostate gland no more. Our prostate gland is in between here. When you walk, you eliminate all of this here, inflammation in your prostate. You get rid of it. People of old, older men, back in the days, they, they never had cars. They used to walk. Most of us, we sit on our prostate every day because we are constipated. The feces sit right on top because remember, your colon runs right here. Your colon runs right here. That's your, that's your bowel right there. Your anus runs right here. Sometimes you're sitting with days with feces here. That goes up into your colon. That's it. Sometimes you're sitting down. Right here is where the feces are sitting, right on the prostate. By way of absorption, you know what I'm talking about. Things absorb through your skin. The feces poison your prostate because you're sitting on it. You're driving to work. You're driving from work. You only have one bowel movement a day. In the evening, you're sitting on your prostate. The feces is getting absorbed into it. We are not walking enough. So the prostate becomes inflamed. That's one of the big contributors that nobody don't really talk about. But it's very simple to understand that that is a contributor. When you don't walk, 
your prostate can get enlarged because walking keeps it nice and supple. You understand? He's like, you've got, you got to have jiggy jiggy. Okay. Keep it. Keep it going. Right. I like it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. I'm getting some feedback from somewhere. You've got to walk. Yeah? Okay, walking is a very, very important part of preventing this issue. Now, some of us might just be able to walk for five minutes or so, but we need to be able to walk for at least 30 minutes to an hour a day to sort this issue out. But we know our lifestyle does not allow us to do that, especially, I know about living in England, we don't get time to walk, we have to make time to walk. Whereas when you live in a rural area in the Caribbean or in Africa, you walk the way you want to go. You don't have a car, you have to move. You move, you, that is where you see the prostate stays in check because you're able, you're moving, you're moving. Okay, so walking is a big factor. A lack of walking can contribute. If you're not walking enough, it can contribute. If you're walking enough, then you can help alleviate this problem. Okay, um, the second risk factor is to do with what you're eating. There's a research, I don't have it here, but I've read it. How meat, flesh foods contribute big time. Flesh foods. I'm talking about fish as flesh as well. Flesh food, anything with an eye, contribute big time to the prostate and cancer. So in reversing or preventing this problem, we need to not only just walk more, but we need to what? Reduce our meat intake or our flesh intake significantly. If not, totally is better. Just leave it alone. Okay? That, those are two things. Diet is very important. Eat more vegetables. We, we have heard these things before. Eat more vegetables. Eat more natural stuff. Avoid the processed food. Reduce the sugar. All these things are contributors. Because why? They are toxic in how, or toxic in how they affect the body. When you eat flesh, it sits in your body for like 72 hours before it comes out, you know. And unless you have a bug or something that's wrong for this thing to wash out, this thing sits in your body for nearly three days before it comes out. It rottens your body. It, your, you see, your body was not really designed for that. That was a secondary diet that was given to man. And then, you know, we lived on this diet, but it wasn't so much. And back in the days, we weren't able to eat so much meat. Sometimes we eat meat once a week. Now we're eating meat every day. This is a big contributor to this problem, okay? Roasted meat is a big problem. That is carcinogenic in its totality for men, okay? So exercise and diet, meat in particular, are contributors. Those two are very big contributors to prostate issues in our time. Just those two. If we can get our walking right, reduce the meat intake, we would have done some percentage. I don't know what it is, but we would have done to a great deal prevent and stop this condition from happening if we can just reduce and increase our walking, reduce our meat intake and increase our walking. Okay, and then you have the dairy factor, the cheese especially. They said cheese contribute big time to this. Again, this is because it's toxic buildup. Your body cannot get rid of the waste. Now, when you read the nutritional fact on a piece of thing or cheese, it tells you about the protein and the calcium that you're going to get. Of course, but it's a big price to pay. If you're just eating the cheese for the protein and the calcium, you can get protein and calcium from using a good plant-based diet. You can get all your protein from using plant-based diet. Your beans, your legumes, your green leafy vegetables, that's enough to give you what you need. Okay, you do not eat meat. You don't need to eat meat to get these things. You don't need to eat dairy to get these things. All right, that's very important for us to acknowledge and understand when it comes to prostate health. Okay, um, again, we have bad lifestyle practices the drinking of alcohol, the smoking, and all these things, those are contributors. As a black person, however, one of the big contributors also they reckon is the vitamin D. Now, I heard Pastor Sam spoke about that. Uh, vitamin D3, to be exact, um, which is actually a hormone. It changes into a hormone when it gets into your body. It's a vitamin that changes to a hormone and affects so much. You know, they said vitamin D deficiency, okay? If you're deficient in vitamin D, you are 50% risk of all cancers, including in prostate cancer. Um, for us that live in the UK, or for those that live in the UK still, I know that when come October, September, October, <laughs> The sun, you're not going to get enough. 
not that it's not there, because we know that it can be as cold as ice and the sun is still shining. But most of us, we're going to hide from the sun because outside is too cold. Okay? I say put your clothes on, um, cover up well, leave your face exposed, and get that vitamin D. It's best to get it from the sun. Okay? So sunshine is crucial. However, if you're not able to get that, then it'd be wise to supplement on vitamin D3. Okay? You can get it at, from a good health store, or you can just post that. Uh, question on the group, the men group, um, and you will be able to, we'll be able to direct you. For those of you who know that we do have a men's group uh, where only men are, um, you can share your private questions there and um, you can click on somebody. If you, if you, if you want to have a private consult or private talk, you can click on their name and have that private conversation if you don't want to make it public on the group. However, it's a group for men to share and ask their question. Um, accordingly. Okay, so those are some of the things in regards to prostate health. Um, now, those are some of the contributing factors, right? Now, let me, let me, let me, let's talk about what can we do? What can we do? I heard about sarpometo. I understand that. Here's the thing with prostate, guys. They will tell you when you go for a prostate issue, yeah, that it is because you have too much testosterone or it is the testosterone that's feeding this cancer. But you need to do your research. Men, you're supposed to have testosterone. That's the bottom line. Without testosterone, you won't have muscle tone. You won't be a man. You will be feminine. You, you don't, you'll just be... Nah. You, you get me? Testosterone protects you as a man from disease. Now, you're going to read the research. Some of you probably know it already because I don't know everybody's background on there. You're going to read the research that it is a contributor. But we're telling you from our experience of dealing with prostate cancer, I'm not talking about book. I'm talking about what we know, what we see, what we do. When they put this you on a prostate cancer program according to the medical system and they reduce your male testosterone so it doesn't feed the cancer, you become ill. Ultimately, you become sick as a man, okay? It, because you need that. And I'm, I'm talking about real patients. I'm not talking about book. I'm talking about what we see. So you reduce the man's testosterone. You're taking away a lot of defense from him. So you're saying, oh, this testosterone is causing this prostate cancer and it's feeding it. Now take it away. So what happens? He gets sick. His whole body now is exposed to cancer because that is a protector. You need testosterone, okay? So that's a that's an issue. Somebody is, is on the line as well. Um, I heard that. Uh, okay. All right. So testosterone. You need to keep your testosterone up and keep it healthy. Yeah. It's, it's what makes you a man, and that's what they do when they do hormone therapy on a man who has prostate cancer. That's what they do. Take away that male testosterone. Okay. You will read the research. I've done it both. I've read the research that explain why you should take it. And I've read the research that says you shouldn't take it. The one that makes sense to me is the one that says you shouldn't take it because of the benefit that, that testosterone's got for you as a man. All right. Mm -hmm. And you know that when you, ain't, when you ain't got no testosterone, men, things get smaller, things get shrinking up. You are not able to perform as a man in certain capacity. Yeah. That's what you get from that. Okay. So watch your testosterone level. Other things that you can do, you got the herbal things, um, like the sarpometto and the, the, um, the zinc and all that stuff. Now you heard Pastor, he spoke about the zinc, yeah? Um, you can get a zinc supplement. Um, one of the big things that have zinc in it is pumpkin seed, which you heard Pastor Sam, he spoke about it and he explained that's why he believes that a lot of people in, I think wherever he says, Romania or wherever, don't have this problem. Now, what you need to understand, that might be true, but some of you are going to run away here. You're going to get your big supplement. Your prostate needs zinc to maintain good health. Every time you ejaculate as a man, oh, prostate empty out. If you don't put it back and you get back at it again, you ain't even got no zinc. Now, what you got now? You got a damaged prostate. You're going to be inflamed because you ain't got no zinc. It protects your prostate. You understand? Okay, so you do it now. You empty. And then tomorrow you do it again. And you empty, and then, or maybe two times a day, depending on how much testosterone you got as a man, you empty three, four times a day. You ain't got no sink. 
How are you going to get that zip back? You're going to go now. You're going to say, hey, Jay, I'm a very busy man. I'm going to load up on my zip. Okay, that's good. But now you need to understand something. The body is fearful and wonderful made. Do you know that if you have an iron deficiency, it is, you could be eating iron and your body's not getting the iron? How much time you see women, especially? It's not women's side, but not a lot of time women are eating. They got iron deficiency. Why? It's not because they're not eating iron. It's because their body is not absorbing. You are what you eat, they say. But I go a little bit further. You are what you absorb. That's what causes the problem. If you eat poison and your body doesn't take it in, it doesn't do you no harm. If you eat good food and your body doesn't take it in, it doesn't do you no good. It's simple. Yeah? If you're eating good food and your body's not taking it in, it's, it's no good. So I'm going to wrap up, right? I'm going to give you a chance to ask a question. I can carry on. But as I said, We'll take some more in the, the next series. So I don't know how well you can see my chart here, uh, but it's a very basic chart. And I use this here simple system to explain also what is going on. I'm gonna close off with this. Get your zinc in your prostate. It will protect it. That's what Sam, Pastor Sam said to you as well. And I'm gonna finish on that note. But if your body is not absorbing the zinc, then it's as good as if you ain't eating it. Now. Zinc is quite funny. You see, your body needs to absorb the zinc. If you're eating certain food that's got certain chemicals, which is good, it's called phytate. Ne? It's called phytate. It's good to protect plants in the process of, of, of preserving it to be used or to grow. It's good for that. Um, but it also poses a negative effect against the absorption of zinc. So you might be eating a good vegetarian diet, so you're gonna stop eating this and go, go and start eating vegetarian diet, eating more legumes and beans and eating more pumpkin seed and taking, but then you're still not getting the, the vitamin, the, the, the zinc, you see? Because the food that you're eating, the combination is wrong. Well, the phytates in the food is blocking the absorption of the zinc in the prostate. Are you following? Just like with the coronavirus, you can take zinc. Zinc will zap coronavirus. It's a known fact. You can go there. Okay? Zinc with, 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 with hydroxychloroquine, with, with, it, it, it nullifies coronavirus. So if you, if you got any concern about the coronavirus, go and get yourself some zinc and some NAC, um, some acidocysteine, um, NAC, NAC, just call it NAC, and, and, and start using it. But remember, it needs something to bring it in. They are called ionophores. They are key chemicals that allow the zinc to get into the cell to do the job that it's supposed to do. And that works for the coronavirus. And it's similar to how it works for the prostate. If you're eating certain food, you could be blocking the zinc absorption, which is necessary to renourish your prostate, and you could take all the supplement you want. If you're eating wrong, and you're eating wrong combination, then you're gonna block it. So this is how you do it, okay? You're gonna eat your pumpkin seed. You're gonna watch what you put it in, yeah? You don't watch what you're eating. You need to check out what food has got phytates in it and what food don't, because phytate will block the absorption of zinc, okay? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a science here. So if you're eating zinc, in a chemical form, or it's best to eat it at least an hour away before you eat anything else. And you can take zinc as a supplement on an empty stomach. You understand? So that way it gets into your system uninterrupted. That's how you put zinc in, okay? To speed up the absorption of it, there's certain teas you can take to do it. There's certain, um, um, you know, there's, there's certain chemicals in certain teas. I don't re recall it right now, but I will share it to you. I do know that it's in um, green tea. I know that though a lot of people get benefit, there's a lot of caffeine and other stuff in green tea that has a negative effect. But when you understand the science of health properly, you will understand how to use green tea to get zinc into your blood and still don't get the negative effect of the green tea, but get the benefit of the zinc whilst using it as a niaphorb to get it into, yeah, into the cells. So zinc is very, very important for your prostate health. Get the zinc in there and you will fix a lot. Sal palmetto is good. Um, it's good, but sal palmetto can also create some hormonal imbalance in your system. 
all right? It's good, it can help, but it can cause some hormonal imbalances. Nettle is great. Nettle, sting nettle, it's growing in England a while right now. It is great. Use that as a tea. So simple. If I'm going to close right now and say this here, you want to do something for your prostate? Okay. Start exercising. Walk more. Yes. You know about the new start program, nutrition, exercise, and so on and so forth. You'll hear more about it. We'll post it. Start key things. Walking more, not running. Understand what I said. Not running. Walking, moving the legs like this for long periods can get the PSA down and can shrink the size of the prostate. Number one. Number two, change your diet. Go to, uh, if you have a problem, then I recommend you totally leave the meat completely. All right. And learn. We got teams in the UK right there. And here in Africa, we'll teach you how to prepare your food properly. Leave meat and dairy and meat byproducts alone and sugar. Leave those things alone, along with the rye food, if you have a problem. If you don't have a problem, you're dealing with preventive, now you need to cut these things down and ultimately cut them out, okay? But if there's an emergency, you need to act with the emergency. So change your diet. Walking more, change your diet. Very important. No meat, no dairy. Change your diet if you've got concerns or if you have a problem. If you don't, reduce these things drastically to probably once a month or once every two weeks, that kind of drastic. Learn how to eat more raw vegetables, okay? Now you're gonna say, all right, Jay, my walking is good, my, 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 my diet has changed, what can I do now? All right, clean your colon. Brother Noah spoke about that. Apart from that, you need to put back that which you have lost. Now, what do you do? Yeah, I told you, zinc is a key element for the function of prostate. How do you get that key element in? By paying attention to what you are combining whilst you are eating. Pumpkin seed is very rich. Pay attention to what you eat with it. Best to eat it on an empty stomach by itself. Blend it up. Eat a couple of tablespoons a day. That's fine, but eat it away from other food to ensure that your body absorb it. If you're taking a supplement, make sure you take the supplement on an empty stomach. You need about 50 grams a day, from what I understand, um, you know, with the zinc. But get that in your system. Do not mix it with your food, okay? If you want to know what herb I would recommend, I would say use nettle, use and ginger, make it together. Boil the ginger, and then when the ginger is finished, boiling, add the nettle and cover it. Do not boil the nettle, just boil the ginger for about 10 minutes to release the ginger oil, it's an active ingredient, and then put your nettle, cover it for about 10 minutes now, then strain it off. Do not boil the nettle, drink that three to four times a day, as a tea, take your zinc, your zinc supplement. Walk 30 to 40 minutes a day, okay? Reduce the meat, reduce the dairy products. That's how you sort that prostate issue out on a basic level. If you got a cancer and you got something else, then speak to one of us on this group. We will give you more, more, more information and make things clearer to you. We will consult with you in that regard. We have medical professionals on here who are able to do that for you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I don't know if I've gone over my time, but until next time, may God bless you. So, um, thanks very much, Jason. That was, um, that was well received, I'm sure, by everyone. Um, excellent presentation, as, as always. Um, can I just uh, remind everyone that you can now um, ask your question either in the chat room, or you can um, raise your hand. And if you raise your hand up live, I'm sure um, one of them will be able to your hands and take them. I'm going to look at the screen and see the questions that will be coming in on the chat room. Um, Jason will be available to take your your question, but also we've got um, on the panel um, from the Association of Gospel Medical Missionaries, we've also got Noel Fender, Jonathan Curlew, Lewis Harris, Chris Higgins, and Edgar Wallace. I'm sure that they'll all be able to, um, to contribute um, to your question. Um, I've, I've just got a, um, a little question here, um, um, Jason. Um, mm -hmm. like I said at the top of the program that um, at, at present, you know, and it's, it's not a secret, if, it, if it, um, I am a minister, if it was a gospel, I would have converted a lot of people. I'm going through um, um, treatment at the moment for prostate cancer, obviously. I, uh, mm -hmm. I only found out late not late enough for it to um to have taken hold and get into my bones and so on. 
it's something that my doctor's been monitoring ever since my father died of prostate cancer. Um, he told me that it was probably hereditary. Um, it caused me to believe that because not only me, but um, another close member of my family, an another two close members of my family have also developed the same symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, what I want to know is that uh, at what stage could you use dietary method to control prostate cancer? Is it stage one, stage two, or stage three, or stage four? At what point do you think we could interject with the, um, with the dietary um, scenario? All right. Very well question. I, I really like that question. Huh? Um, let me answer you like this. Um, um, and just, be, just, just permit me to ask you this here. The, yeah. the food and the diet that you have been, you know, the diet and lifestyle that you've been practicing, how different is it from, let's start with the diet. How different is your diet been from that which your father had practiced? That's a question I'm asking you. Right. Well, I, I, I mean, obviously, I can't say my diet was any different from my father's because we all eat the same food. We grew up eating the same food, um, more or less doing the same thing. The only thing that I probably had more in common with, with, the, with the rest of society that my father doesn't have is exercise. And I can't really mm -hmm. say that because he, he did a lot more walking than I did. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm mm -hmm. obviously, they used to catch bus. I, I grew up having a car, sort of thing. <laughs> So um, I can see that but our diet followed the same pattern. And um, so when I was told it was hereditary, I want to know how much of this was hereditary or due to, to a dietary um, form of um, illness, basically. Mm. Well, one thing, and, and thank you for being um, really honest and clear with that. Um, <laughs> I can tell you one thing that was hereditary, and that was the diet. And uh, yeah. if the diet was a trigger and a switch. You see, this is how, this is how you explain it. Um, and I'll tell you what stage we should employ the diet. Well, you should have to work it out even. Diet is like this. Say, uh, genetics, rather, and diet is like this. If I give you a gun, um, Mr. Stanley, Sterling, sorry. Uh, if I give you a gun fully loaded, it's dangerous, isn't it? Yes. yes. When you press the trigger. <laughs> yes. But if I give you a gun fully loaded and I put the safety mechanism on and I place the gun in a safety box over there, the gun is still dangerous, but it is very much inactive. Am I right? Yes. Right. That's how genetics is. You see, genetics load the gun. It, it, you have the, the potential to develop whatever disease, but it is your lifestyle and your diet that's going to pull the trigger. That's, that's genetics. That should give you an indication of how I'm going to answer your question. So, when should you implement diet and lifestyle changes in regards to cancer? I say you shouldn't wait until you get cancer. Prevention is better than cure. Yeah. You are learning here from this group. Our mission is to teach men to be healthy. We want, we want you to be healthy in your home, in your community. So, from now, wherever you are, whether you have cancer or not, whether your father have it or not, here is what we're saying. We're giving you some facts. The prostate is hurting a lot of men and especially black men. One. Two, there is something you can do, whether it's genetics or no genetics. That is diet and lifestyle change. We can do that. Number three, we know some of those things. We know about the zinc. We know about the, 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 the what? The, the, you know, the, the, the herb that I mentioned. Stinging nettles. You know, my brain is running about 100 right now, so I can't catch up. So. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, so we know about those things. So implement those things. Start taking supplements um, as good things supplement. Change your diet. You know, start exercising. Don't wait until you're sick. Prevention is better than cure. And if you are uh, come down with one of these conditions, then you know, you have some information to work with. Speak to one of us off the group, though. I'm sure we can give you additional information that we're willing to share on this group right now. Okay. I've got a mess I've got a question here from Sinclair, and he's asking. He said, "Jason, you say that you have a regular check um, to have a regular check regarding PSA. When should you have a scan when your PSA is within normal level? I have a regular check each year." Please advise. So obviously, you want to know whether or not you can have a scan 
before they um they, they found anything wrong. Okay, now listen, I don't have a, a schedule for when one should have a scan. Um, I don't know if they, I'm sure there is guidelines um, to do so. Uh, however, um, if you don't have no symptoms or no sign and you want to check it out and you're at doubt, then perhaps it's now is a wise time to go and get that checked. You, to just to put your mind at ease because you don't have no symptoms, you don't have no sign, your prostate, your PSA is not high. Go and get a scan just to start yourself off. And then you will have an idea regularly. You know, cancers, they normally take a good while to, to develop once they have start. Sorry, before they start. They take anything from 10 to 15 years to develop to something serious. So if you go and get a scan, which is definite, and you don't have it, then you know now. Change your diet, change your lifestyle. Big possibility you won't get it. <laughs> Jonathan, um, Brent here, yeah, um, South African in the UK, uh, from Port Elizabeth, just down the coast from you. Um, with regards to the zinc, how, how many milligrams would you recommend in a day? About 50. 50, yes? Yeah, okay. about that. And, 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 and the nettle tea, um, does that aid for the absorption of the zinc, or is that in its own, does it assist the prostate? It helps. It helps with the inflammation of the prostate. It helps with in, in back in Grenada. There was a guy. For those of you, uh, where's my good friend there, David Bartholomew? I don't know if you remember him, David. A guy named Control. He, he's an old fella, and that man been deal, dealing with prostate cancer. Everybody who had prostate cancer go to Control. Yeah, and that's my uncle. Of, there you go. <laughs> You're right, David. All right. Um, you know what I'm saying, right, David? You remember him. He treats Absolute, prostate. Ab absolutely. That's right. He, he'd been, he, listen, that brother's been treating prostate before I was born. Successfully so, without putting zinc in your body. He don't know nothing about that. All he knows is that, let me clean out your colon. And let me give you some warm water up there. Keep the water <laughs> in your lower rectum. <laughs> and, and go and drink some nettle tea. He'll tell you what to link and, and stop eating meat. That's as far as his knowledge go. Guess what? This guy, I know people that he's been curing. I used to sit at that brother's feet when I was in Grenada. And he telling me all these things and saying, this is how you do this here. And I was happy for that. But that netto has got some wonderful healing properties. Apart from the high end and the nutritional belt, it has got serious anti-inflammatory properties in there. Mm -hmm. could, I, could I just very briefly add, Jay, yes, Jason? Um, yes, please. Yeah, it's very, very important. I mean, as you mentioned, that the, the, the rectum is very, very close in proximity to the prostate. Yes. And the walls are very thin, uh, a cell width in the, the uh, intestine. And so it's very easy for the toxins to transfer from the prostate, or from the rectum to the prostate, which can increase the toxicity, hence inflammation, and therefore bring about the issues that you've been explaining. That's right. That's important. Thanks, Clean that's, that right. That's, what, that's what my uncle Control was doing. That's right. He would, he would, this old man back in Grenada, he has a mat on the floor, like literally on the floor. He's got a toilet there in the corner. He'll take you there, you'll put an enema up your butt. <laughs> you'll mix it with, with pure soap and warm water. And you put it up your butt and he'll roll you from one side of the room. He'll tell you roll. Literally, you roll over. He'll roll you two times that way, two times, until everything inside you let loose. He'll tell you, go and sit down there on the toilet. And everything comes out. Now, that's control. He's, a, he's, he's, a, he's one of the oldest medical missionary I know personally. All right? And by the way, David, David, do you still go by the name Gifted Hands, David? That, David, that, me and David go back a long time. <laughs> by by long the grace time. of God, man, still working, bro, still working. David is an excellent, excellent, excellent physiotherapist. Powerful, powerful. I remember, David, you remember once you taught the student anatomy and physiology in a couple of days of the human bones, you remember? Yep, yep. That's right, excellent, excellent physio. If you got any muscular... Um, skeletal muscular issue, contact David. I don't know no better. The rest is God. Right. I've got another yes. question here from somebody, Hugh G. Is there a budgetary issue for doctors? When I request the test, the doctor appeared to be discouraging me. So doctors are discouraging men from having um, 
prostate test. Well, I know that that shouldn't be the case because you're you're advised even or, or even in the National Health Service that you should um you should have a prostate test over the age of 45, definitely at this stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you will have doctor, and that's an individual thing. That's, that's something that they might want to, you know, they might feel that they don't want to check you, I, I guess. But you will still, you, you are entitled to change your doctor. You, you are entitled to go and get your check. So just because they, they don't want you, you must. Listen, what is important, yeah? This is, this is a mind shift. The Bible says in Romans 12, right? It says that we must what be transformed by the renewing of our mind we must right. know how to we need to have a little mind shift here you are primarily in charge of your health yeah it is not the doctor's responsibility it is your responsibility look after your health yes okay yes. it is your response if you go to a doctor and he says oh i don't think i want to do that or for what he gives you whatever and doctors like to use big words to describe small things don't worry go to the next just go somewhere else and get your check done. It's that simple. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions? Any other comments? Well, I'm not hearing nobody. So any any other question, please? Any other questions? In the we see there's plenty of questions in the chat. Can, can I ask a question, please? Um, it's, I'm just talking about the nettle. Um, when uh, the stinging nettle, is it any time that you, any time of the year that you can just take out the nettle? And I've got a lot of uh, stinging nettle in the back of my garden, you see, so I just wanted to find out um, whether I can just... Um, harvest that drop and then put it in with the actual um uh, ginger yes it's, it's once it's there man once once it's producing it you use that um you know the bible says something like this i know a lot of us here might not <clears throat> see the bible in this side but i read the bible all the time the bible says in in genesis it says cursed is the ground it says thorn and sister shall it bring forth it says now that thorn and sister shall be for your food a lot of that's a thistle Sting a nettle is a thistle. It, it has those little things on it will bite you. A lot of the things that we see out there in nature, in, in Jamaica, we call it coach. We have coach. You, some of you will understand what that means. Um, yeah. That's a nettle. That, that is a, it's from a similar family as the sting a nettle. That's the English version or the Western version from ours in the Caribbean. A similar thing. You boil these things. They have, God has put aside lemon. They got their, 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 their thorns on them. Thorns and thistle. That's where a lot of our measures. So once it's producing in your garden in the background, that means the Lord in his wisdom has placed medicine in your home, brother. That's what that means. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine. Because the only reason I ask is that I know that people have said that um, it, you, should, you should use the nettle when you've got the little white um, bubbles on it. That's the reason why I'm asking. Yeah, the leaves, the leaves of the nettle is the, is the medicine, yeah? Oh right, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other question, Mrs. Sterling? Um, well, someone was asking what, what is the, the what, what is PSA? Um, but I see somebody's got it on the chat line. I don't know if they're in the chat room, but they were asking mm. what is PSA? Okay, does anybody from the panel would like to answer that question? Anybody? Okay, PSA means prostate specific antigen. It's, a, it's just like that. Prostate specific mean specific. When you something is specific, it means direct only. You understand? So it's prostate specific. So it's an antigen that is only produced by the prostate. Prostate specific antigen. When it is too much in the blood, that they, they know that no, no, no. It's not supposed to be over this. This is too much. So it's a specific antigen that belongs only to the prostate that is too much in the blood. That's what it means. So they know that something is wrong with the prostate. It's too much, so it's spilling. It's like this thing, I pour water in it, it's fine. As long as it's containing it, when it's spilling, it's too much. So you, the antigen is spilling into the blood, they pick it up, say it's too much in the blood, something is going wrong with the prostate, they check the prostate. If it's cancerous, it will show. If it's not, then it will show. It's simple. But it's prostate-specific antigen. That's what it means. 
Okay, I hope that clears that up. Anyone out there with any more general question, please? I was just saying, um, um, Edward, it would be better if they just raise their hands in the chat. Yes. And then I'll recognize them. Yeah, there, there's a lot here though. Um, but there, there's a lot of question inside the chat, but I do know that um, there are people who are responding. Some of them answered. Yes. Yeah, there, there are a lot of questions in the chat room, but there are also a lot of answers being supplied in the chat room as well. So we prefer... So, so what, uh, what I'm saying, if someone wanted to be acknowledged to ask a, a public question, they, they can do so by just um, raising their hand in the chat. Yes, by all means. Yeah, by all means. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any questions? But in general, guys, look, look after your health. Um, it is all we got. I've got a slogan that I always say, health is not everything. But without health, everything becomes nothing. You could, we have seen it. A lot of us here who knows from the Caribbean and African community, we have seen people. The previous generation, they come from the Caribbean. They work hard in the, in the mail and the, the bus company, railway. Build this big mansion back there in Jamaica, in the Caribbean, wherever. Go home. Live two years in it. That's what it is. They spend all their years generating money just to get sick and die when they go home. Look after your health. Your money can't save you. Your money can't save you. They have a saying, say, you spend a couple of, the first 40 years of your life making money and the rest of it spending it on your health. Okay? I think that's a bad trade-off. Yeah. Look after your health. It's important. Paul Fletcher is asking, how can one improve their absorption of good food? Okay, good question. Um, first of all, absorption is crucial, yeah? Uh, in Jamaica, we, we, we always say we eat good food, we eat good food, we eat good food. What we don't realize in Jamaica, we exercise a lot. We do a lot of physical activity. It's not so much the good food. You're, you're living a, a very active lifestyle. And so the food seems to be good because of a lot of it is starch and you're burning it up because it gives you energy. Um, what it is, it's the absorption of that which you eat is important. Now, to, 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 first of all, if we've been eating and drinking a lot all of our lives, then there's a big possibility that your body's not absorbing what you're eating. Okay, the Bible have a saying that it says, a lot of my health principles come from the Bible. Um, do appreciate that. Um, and the Bible have a thing saying that you cannot put new wine into an old bottle. Now, what that is pretty saying is that you might want to change your diet to a better diet even now. You might want to say, well, wow, I'm going to change my diet because I want to make sure I don't get this prostate issue. I'm going to stop eating meat. I'm going to do this, this. Fine. You educate yourself in doing so. What is important? As you transit from one diet to the other, remove the waste from your system. That's the first thing that you need to do in clearing up the absorption issue. Remove the old ways so your body makes space all the gog in your system goes so your body can absorb two don't eat and drink because as the pastor says you dilute the di the, the high chloric acid hydrochloric acid in your stomach that breaks down the food to a consistency where your body can absorb it if you're eating and drinking simply meaning if you eat now and drink after or you're eating and literally drinking you're eating and then drinking that is going to impair your absorption why because one the body is not going to have the right um, acids to break down the food for your body to be able to absorb the nutrients. So stop that one. Wrong combination of food. Eating the wrong combination of food can stop your body from absorbing. I just showed you how zinc could be easily absorbed. You can eat zinc. If your body is not absorbing it, it's not getting to your system. Simple. Okay, so wrong combination can also. And when, for those of you who stay on this group, if you do not, if you're not a part of the, the mail WhatsApp group, please get the information. Jonathan, I don't know if you can post it. Join that group because I'm going to share with you on that group food combination. I'm going to put that on there so you can look at it for yourself. A lot of this information, I will share it on that group throughout the next few days. So those are a few other things. Stop eating and drinking, clean out your colon, and watch your food combination. Those are crucial. And also a gentle walk after you eat. Those are crucial for good absorption, okay? I've been told that there's, there are a couple of hands in the chat, but I can't seem to um, see them. Okay, Mr. Bim, Bindo. Yeah, I can see two hands in the chat. So we got Brent and we got Mr. Geiger. 
So can we take them in order, please, as you just... Um, okay. Um, Brent, can you ask your question first, and then Mr. Geyser or Mrs. Geyser, we can uh, take yours after it. So Brent, can you take your question first, please? Yeah, um, a bit earlier when you were chatting around the coronavirus, you mentioned the word Mac for for a, sort of some, something you can take. You mentioned it was that did I hear correctly? NAC, I think you said. Yes, NAC. Yes, NAC is very, very good. Um it's it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful precursor for glutathione, which is um is good for your immune system. Yes, an antioxidant. Mm -hmm. Um it's one of the best out there actually. Um, not only that, if you're taking things like vitamin C, what NAC does, it helps to stabilize because vitamin C is water soluble and vitamin B is yeah. water soluble. So when you take them in, yeah. if you don't replenish them daily, they go. But what these things, they allow the body to recycle and use them at a consistency that will help you. You understand? So NAC okay. is one of those things. Um, so, so, yes. So in what form do you take the NAC? Is it a natural product or is it a supplement? It's it's in a supplement. It's in supplement um, um, that they isolate because um, let me explain. The acidal cystine is is um, is supposed. Your body is supposed to make it, yeah. But when your body has failed to make enough, then then mm. a supplement will help you. And I and I always say to folks, don't don't live on supplements, yeah. Don't live on no. supplements. What you do, you use supplements to get yourself out of danger. You understand? Mm. It's almost like we we at our clinic. We do what you call IV vitamin C, and we put vitamin Bs in there, and, and that's when somebody, when we, when somebody's cancer, we know that they need ton loads of vitamin C, and to put it through yeah. their mouth, yeah. they just can't absorb it. So what we do, we bypass that system periodically yeah. just to boost them to get them out of danger, yeah. so that food can take so, over and lifestyle can take over. So, so, so you what, know is what, knack in, what is what is in its natural form then? What type of food is it? Is it a food or is it? Is it you... It's, a, it's, a, it's a protein that your body will make, okay? Oh, so it's, it's, a, it's a combination of what you eat that will make it. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Okay. Next, please. Who was the next person, Jonathan? Um, Mine is not guys. Okay. Mine is not a, a question, more of a comment. Um, I joined the group last week, although it was late. Um, just got a gist of what was being spoken about last week. And uh, um, just want to encourage all of you, um, our teachers and uh, the medical missionary uh, personnel that is helping us, very crucial. I just look forward to us having this on a weekly basis as opposed to the three times that was initially spoken about. So we continue to pray for you. We thank the good Lord for you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Right. We will. Thank we will you very much. We could, we'll keep it going every week. We, 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 we've spoken about that. It's just that this is the first series um, of, of many series. Excellent. Thank you, Brother Jason. Yeah. I've got a question here, uh, which is probably relevant um, on the chat. It's from, what is it? It's from Kwambina K. Does this mean it's rather how the food is prepared that is the inhibitor rather than the food itself? Okay, yes, you got a point there. For well, example, um, a lot of the legumes and, and, and beans and stuff that we eat, okay, it is how it is prepared. If you, if you just boil it and use it, that can black, get, that can, because the, <clears throat> the phytate is still there, that can block the absorption of nutrients. Um, however, if you sprout it, if you sprout it, I'm going to share that on the group as well, how to start doing your own sprouting. If you sprout it, you will be able to use that food, prepare it, and it won't block the absorption. So yes, food preparation have a lot to do with the absorption and the rejection of nutrients. That is something that will come as we go along. As We're just in the early stage, guys. We're creating excitement, so you want to learn more. We will take it practical. I will do programs where I show you how to do things on here. Right now, we're in the, the introduction stage of these Men Health series. <clears throat> Someone here is asking, um, he said, we need zinc. True. Their confusion seems from the lack of clarity as to how we can absorb it. Can this be further clarified? Okay. So, um, 
Right. Um, um, <clears throat> okay. So zinc is, is essential for the body. All right. It has a wonderful benefits. I mean, it's, it's loads. I'm just focusing on the prostate because we're talking about men's health, but it, it, it does wonderful things. As I said, it's also great. It's a wonderful um, thing to stop this coronavirus. It's really good. We need to educate ourselves, guys. We need to look after our health here. We don't need to be dying from this virus. Okay. We need to be making sure we don't succumb to it. I make sure our immune system is strong. And if we get it, we need to know how to block this thing. Okay. Now, in terms of the, 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 the absorption of zinc, um, as, as per the question that is, is asked, I believe that's what they're asking, right? They want clarity. Yes, clarity, yes. All right. I, I'm, I'm just going to repeat myself because sometimes I do speak fast. Okay. Your body needs zinc. We know that for many processes, but it's especially good for the prostate. Depending on what you are eating, you can stop the absorption or you can enhance the absorption. So I was saying there is a chemical you can get. It's a pharmaceutical, though. It's a pharmaceutical. Um, some people will not uh, uh, agree to get it and so on and so forth. But it's, it's very efficient. In, it's, a, it's called a aniaphor. What the aniaphor is, it, it, it is a... It's an ingredient or active ingredient that unlocks the cell and allow the zinc to go in. Without an an aniaphor, the zinc cannot get in. One. Two, if you're eating certain things with a chemical in it called phytate, it also further blocks the zinc from getting into your cells. Remember, outside your cells, these things, they need to get into the cells to do what they need to do. So one, you need something to take it through two certain food that you eat can stop it so in terms of food it's best to eat or take your zinc away from eating so about an hour or so two hours before you eat to ensure that it doesn't block because you can still eat your beans i'm not saying you you're not supposed to eat your beans with the phytates i'm not saying that i'm saying you can still boil your beans soak them use them sprout them whatever but i'm saying to uh, to to prevent them from being a hindrance to absorb the zinc Eat them away from taking your zinc. That will help with the body way of absorbing it in a small amount. But if you want to enhance the uptake of zinc, there's things you can do. One, you can go and see a doctor or somebody, get them to give you um, hydroxychloroquine. They'll get that into your system. Your body will get heavy doses of zinc. Then you need to detoxify that hydroxychloroquine out of your system, okay? Because that will open up the gateway and get that zinc in your system ASAP. Um, also, there's certain herbal combination and herbal tea. The quickest one I can tell you off my head, which is one that a lot of the people might not agree with, and I don't agree with it as a, on a long-term use anyway, is something called green tea. Green tea has got flavonoids in there that acts as an ionophore, which allows the zinc to go into your system. Okay, but I don't recommend the use of, bitter, of um, green tea generally. No, I don't, because of the side effects and the heavy level of caffeine and other things that can affect your health. I don't, I know it's good for antioxidant and it's the same reason. It's got good chemicals, but it's got bad. You don't need it. And there's herbal combination that you can use, but that's for a more advanced lesson, okay? I don't know if anybody's got anything to add in regards to the absorption and more clarity in regards to that on the group. Any of the men from the panel, do you have anything else do you want to add to that? Did I over explain or under explain? <laughs> Brother Noel, would you like to share any information there? We can't hear you, Brother Noel. No, I'm, I'm saying that. I think you covered it, RJ. Okay. Yeah. Uh, someone is asking a question here about the nettles. I, I think it might be someone who is probably based in the UK. He said, is nettle any time of the year? I presume that over here, you know, in winter, nettle would probably disappear from some fields or whatever, where in other parts of the world you can get nettles um, freely. Mm. What I would say about that, in the, in the, um, in the summer you can harvest it and, and dry it and, try and, 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 and save it for the winter. You can? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We have one more hands up as well. Um, Mr. Maitland. Maitland's iPad. Okay. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, my question really is, um, with the stinging nettle, um, is it equally potent with a tablet? 
And um, if it is, then um, which is a good brand or recommended brand? Okay. Um, Brother Noel, I'm going to let you answer that. You know the brand of stuff in England more than me right now. I'm out of yeah. there. Yeah, to be honest with you, I wouldn't, being here in the UK, I would say um, go for the stinging nettle that you can go and harvest yourself. There's no need to be taking um, capsules or um, tablets because remember those tablets, they are, they are, those tablets, they are buffered with an um, agent. So you want to get the pure nettle. So it's best to just go and harvest the nettle and use it instead of um, going for tablet. However, if you think of going for tablets, um, there is this um, pro, there's this brand they call um, Life Extension. There's another one they call um, No No Food. They're they're also good as well. So those are some of the brands I would I would probably um, recommend. But there's no need for anybody in the UK to be buying to be getting tablets or capsule because nettle is um, widely available right throughout the UK. Mm, mm, mm. And guys, stay tuned for next week. Strong man, weak man. We gotta. That's gonna be an interesting, funny topic. You don't wanna miss that one. Strong man, weak man. It's gonna teach you how to be a strong man and teach you how to be a weak man. Depends <laughs> if you know what I mean. You know. Join us next week, though. Um, any more questions, quickly, Jonathan? I think our time is up. I've got one question. I got one more question. Richard. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, Okay, so you said that testosterone um, can aid in prostate cancer, but we know of many people in church, they're on testosterone blockers. Um, so the question was, how can testosterone help prostate cancer and what can be taken to increase the testosterone? All right, okay. Um, again, this, 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 this is a funny one, yeah? I'll tell you why. Um, it's been a moment now since I've, I've read up on the research, though the research is there. Um, we know that testosterone is necessary for us to be a man, all right? Something has gone wrong and it is now making the prostate a man, so to speak. It's, it's, it's fueling the prostate with, with, with energy to be cancer. And so they block it, okay? But here's the thing, that's, that's not the solution. From what I studied, that's not the solution. You need, you need they, they're, looking at, they're looking at it from a perspective that is incomplete, um, from what I remember. My, my good friend, Dr. Komoso, she studied it as well. Um, she's not allowed to speak on the group, but she's gonna write it down for you because she's, she's a female. <laughs> she's gonna write it in that box right there um, for you, um, why, and look, I, as I said, I, I know how it works, but at the moment, I don't remember the research. But what we do at this center, what we do to quickly, I talked to you about food just now, what we do to quickly take somebody from zero prostate, I mean, from zero um, testosterone to testosterone, we literally, I do have a medical practitioner on board. So what we do, we give them a strong dose of testosterone just to boost them just to give their body what it needs to take them over there and then we notice that they come alive their eyes sparkle they they start dealing with things they, they become alive they become men again and then they're not under the cloud of sickness weak and what they become alive again they become healthy and so then we say all right now we've got you back as a man that's one thing let's fix this prostate and this this testosterone must not affect the prostate. So we, we, we know how to do that dietary and lifestyle changes using herbs and supplement. We know how to do that, okay? Um, but in terms of diet, in terms of diet, um, there's many things and herbs, there's many things that can boost your testosterone. You got ashwagandha, you got um, goshera, you got, um, you got yam. Yam is, is good for testosterone, Jamaica and yam, yellow yam, all those things, they're good for testosterone, man. They, those things are hormonal food. They're sucking right from the soil. So, so Jason, just, Jason, if you finish making your point, we'd just like to say um, we are more than happy to give um, Dr. Kumosa a little bit of time to do an explanation on that. We will, okay. as we have discussed as men, to make an exception for her. Yeah. Well, is, is that right, Mr. S Mr. Sterling? Is that okay? Yes, we did discuss that. Yes, we said she's right. a medical. She's you know, a medical. I didn't want 
I didn't want to take it up on my head, so I just had to give it to no, no, you guys. We did discuss that. We said she's a medical doctor. If you go to your doctor, you can see a female doctor, a male doctor. So she's there. She's welcome to. Um, oh, you can go ahead and explain that. Um, um, greetings um, and gentlemen. Um, yes, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, testosterone is, is a vital male hormone. Um, I've dealt with men in previously who have been to men's clinic. Um, if you don't have testosterone, you're likely to have obesity, diabetes, um, different kinds of cancers, depression, um, high blood pressure. So now, we understand that when, when somebody is sick and they've got prostate cancer, yes, it can fuel that. But in blocking the testosterone, you cause actually more harm. The man loses uh, muscle tone, they get into a state of depression, they're likely to get all these other conditions I mentioned. So what we do is at a critical time, we replace the testosterone because then you need to be able to allow your body to heal. I had a 34-year-old gentleman who had testosterone levels of a 60-year-old man, an unhealthy 60-year-old man. It was half what it was supposed to be. He had a, an ankle injury. Nine months later, it still was not healed. Um, when we then supplemented and corrected his testosterone, his diabetes went away. He started to be able to lose weight. Um, his wife was very happy. Um, he was ambitious back at work. Um, and his ankle injury was able to heal. So this is the role that testosterone plays in a man. So we have misunderstood it in terms of cancer and at a critical time we need to add it back um, when we've kind of gotten a hold on the prostate cancer so that healing is able to happen. Otherwise it will not happen without the testosterone. Okay, thanks very much. I've got a, I've got a question here on the, on the line. Um, it says, is purifying your blood a good method to help support in getting PSA? Um, in, in regards to purifying the blood, yeah? It's a funny one. In the, in the Caribbean, we talk about blood purification. I'm drinking this herb to purify my blood. Yeah. Um, that's a funny, um, that's a funny uh, um, phrase. Uh, what you need to do, you need to clean up your organs. Your organs clean your blood. <laughs> you know, your liver cleans your blood. Your liver, once you get your liver and your colon right, then your blood become clean. That's how you clean your blood. It's not just using a herb to clean your blood. It's your organs that does that. For all diseases, it's mostly your organs that fix them. Your body is created like that. Herbs are there to help and assist the organs to work properly, but it's the organs that does the restoration in its own self. Okay? Um, yes. If you can get purify your blood um, from toxins, sure. That is definitely going to help with, with this. Listen. Quick one, it slipped me. Does anybody ever heard of something called guinea hen weed or kojo root? Yes, sir. All right. That herb is very pungent and potent for prostate issues. And I'm sure if you're saying yes, you would have heard that story. Yes. The science is in. The science is in. It is a potent herb for restoring the prostate to its normal function. Wonderful stuff. If you can get it in the UK, hey, start using some of that. Start using it Jonathan, periodically. Jonathan, use it for three weeks at a time and stop. Giddy head weed and the other name you said was? Giddy head weed or kojo root. Okay. <clears throat> for those of you who know about it, I'm going to post some information about it on the group because I know we can get it so readily available here in South Africa, but I know in the Caribbean, this thing grows wild and it stinks. You guys know that, right? It has this pungent smell, but it's a good pungent smell. Along with your sour sap leaf, you know what that is? Yeah. Graviola. Yeah. Yes, and put your lemongrass in that. That's a formula right there. Knock out more than prostate cancer. You lean up your system. Yeah. <clears throat> I just have one my, question. Okay. okay, before you answer that question, before, before you present that question, let me just add this here for our protection, both us and you. The information that I'm sharing here is primarily for educational purposes, okay? It is not to be construed as medical advice, neither is it supposed to replace your medical um, doctor's information or recommendation. 
It is for purely educational purposes. And all listeners and ears are supposed to make their wise decision in running it by their general practitioner before you make those decisions or changes. That is our disclaimer for our protection and for yours. Okay, you may ask your questions. Yes, okay. Um, will write that in there. Richard Russell from Camp Hill Church. Um, just one um, thing I need, want to clarify. I noticed you mentioned the um, stinging nettle, and I'm, I'm aware that sometimes they say um, with, her, with herbs, you need to dry it rather than do it green. Does it matter if, 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 we, or if we draw it as against boiling it? I'm not sure if, you know, which, which one have more impact. All right, great stuff. There's certain herbs, yeah? There's certain yeah. herbs. For example, there's something, there's, I'll give you a quick example. We all know it, Madagascar periwinkle. It's a herb that grows wild around in every country, everywhere. Um, it is very strong. It's very good for cancers. That's what they use to make chemotherapy for leukemia and for certain other cancers. It's, it's, it's a chemotherapy herb. Now, it's called periwinkle. When you use it green, it is almost toxic to the body, yeah? It can cause some serious side effects. So it is recommended that you boil it or dry it before you use it. You understand? Um, in, this, in, in a place where the sun actually get to it to kill some of the, the, the potency, um, because to use it, it can cause some, some things. So now, some herbs, some herbs, it actually gets strength when you dry it. Some herb loses their potency when they dry it. Some herbs you have to, when, especially when it comes to leaves. Okay, you 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 mustn't boil leaves unless it's got a toxin element in it. You mustn't boil leaves. These are herbal principles. We will teach you more. I will teach more on that um, as time goes on. But the general principle is you mustn't boil leaves, green or dry, because when you boil it. You, you get rid of all the active ingredients. You're supposed to draw it. It's called infusion, where it's basically you put it in the cup, you pour warm water on it, you let it sit, you strain it, you drink it. That's called infusion. When it comes to barks and twigs and roots, those ones you boil. That's called a decoction. You boil those to release. So for ginger, that's why I said to you, when you're going to use the nettle leaf, you must boil the ginger because the ginger is a what? It's a root. So to release the ginger oil, you boil it. Then you what? Cut off the fire, add your nettle, infuse it, then it takes the property from the nettle in its true strength, combine it with the strength of the ginger, then you got it. But if you boil both of them together, then you kill it. In Jamaica, you can do that because you have too much herbs. The herbs, you boil some today, you get a little bit today, tomorrow you get a little bit. In England, we can't do that because we don't have enough herb rushing um, you know, to, our, to our fingertips so much. So we have to know the techniques to absorb the nutrients. Like sorosy, you know sorosy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorosy is, 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 a, is a potent herb. It's a very it's strong potent for the liver. Mm -hmm. Now, sorosy is something you all know in, in back in the, you just boil that thing and drink it just like that. All mm -hmm. right. Well, you will do better if you make it dry and dry it and drink it. It will do better for you because it's not, it won't damage your liver. It will better ease. Are you get where I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. That's why I asked the question. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, that, all right. That, that, that. Great stuff. I okay. think there's another, another name another for the Cersei, is Victor Lemon, isn't it? Um, um, I, yes, there is another name for it, Jonathan, and it is called, uh, I forgot it. I forgot the name. It slipped me. There is another Carilla. name. Corella. Is it Corella? Corella. Corella. That's it. Corella Bush. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. There is. There's, that's the next name. Yeah. Okay. Any any other question? I can't seem to see any other question in the chat. All right. Look, Jonathan, were you able to post the, 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 the group link on 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 here? For those who have um, not joined the WhatsApp um, group, can you post it within the no, message we, system here? No, but we have a system going on system here where we uh, add in people. Add in. They're, they're actually being okay. yeah, actually Okay, because so, if you can post that information, then people can just copy it and join. But anyway, we will be carrying on next week. Remember, next week, wonderful topic, strong man, weak man. You want to know if you're strong? Join. If you want to be, if you're weak, join. We'll find out next week. Next week is the moment of truth. We'll know what's going on. But join us.
Mm -hmm. If there's no further question, um, I've got a Pastor, question. I've got a question. Okay. Let's go ahead, Sam. Sam, yes. Yeah, it's Sam. Um, what can someone check who has been diagnosed with uh, high levels of uh, high levels of uh, uh, white blood cells, white blood cells, and cannot produce, and cannot produce red blood cells? Okay. All right. Listen, um, Sam. Appreciate your question. We're going to answer you. Um, Jonathan, make sure Sam gets the group link number so we can answer him and do a, a proper consultation with him. Um, that's going to take us outside of our scope today, Sam. Um, but we're going to answer your question. Please, even if you post your number on the line on now, just type in your number in the message. Jonathan, we're going to we're going to answer his question. So just, but because it's going to take us a little bit away, let's do it off the group. Um, Pastor Sterling, yes. you got any? Um. Mm -hmm. um the, um, the, the, there is a lot of questions. I'm just going to ask if some of these questions could be put into, um, from the chat room, could be put into a, a link so that they, yes. could, they could have some private consultation rather than some of the questions they're asking on here. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. would be good. That would be good. So we can yeah. stick to time because we, you know, it's Saturday evening. We're on lockdown, guys. We can spend all night, but we got other things that we want to do, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, listen, I want to say thanks, um, Jason, for all this and the rest of the panel. The rest of the panel. More, than, more, more than helpful. More than helpful. And, um, um, I don't know if you've created a model. Okay. You know, <laughs> that so many people are on now. Are on now. Going forward, you can only have uh, you know, the clusters of success. So hopefully, we'll, we'll get him we'll in next week and we'll probably um, going down. Mm -hmm. going down to something that we might have to pursue further. I, I certainly, yes. I, I certainly yeah. find it very, 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 very informative. And I'm sure everybody, yes. everybody think will agree with that. So yeah. thanks very much again for all your, for all your um, um, wonderful presentation. And thanks, guys. Jonathan, have you got anything? Yes. Guys? yes. Before I go, Jonathan, before you go and before you take over, can I just I close off I know. Okay. before you go? All right. Um, I know all of us men, we're here. We're listening, yeah? Listen up. Um, you see, in society, this health thing goes further than we just looking after our health, yeah? It's, it's deep because a lot of families, they've been affected by, look, look, you, you're healthy today. You get go work, you get a stroke, you get a cancer. You know your life has just changed. Yeah? You're no longer the man, so to speak, if you know what I mean. Yeah. You're now yeah. the patient in the home. This does a lot to a man, not physically alone, but it does something to your head. It changes you. you there's, there's feelings and emotions out there that some of us have never experienced. Well, when certain sickness come upon you, our, we will experience certain emotions that we don't even know who we are. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. yeah, our health is very important. Yes, yeah, psychological issues yeah. happen here. Yeah. And we will yeah. talk about that as we go along. But I'm just saying, look, health is very, very important. Health is very important. Without health, we can't do nothing without our health, guys. I don't care if you're a doctor, a lawyer, a plumber. Or, I don't care. If you ain't got your health, you're not going to fulfill your role as a doctor. You ain't going to fulfill it as a plumber. You ain't going to fulfill it as a pastor. You ain't going to fulfill it. So the Bible puts it this way. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. I will leave it there. Look after your health. Until next time. Thank you very much, Pastor Stalin and the rest of the yeah. men. And thank you very much, Jonathan. Thank I'm just you. saying, before you go, and before everybody, leave, just, uh, to let you know, we have a program on tomorrow, Monday, tomorrow conducted by uh, AGMM, uh, Medical Missionary Association. And it starts, I think, from... I'll let you talk tomorrow until um, 3 o'clock. So we will try and post the, the link in, in here so anybody who wants to join can join us tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Once again, thanks, Jason. Is there anything else to add, Jonathan? Can we close on your prayer? I think I'm good. Okay.
And so, Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, God, for the presentation that we have so joyfully received and accepted today. You tell us in your word that faith without work is dead. And I just pray and ask today, Father, that as we listen to this presentation, Lord, that you'll help us. That not only affect us, but we'll be rekindled and revived. Lord, we'll put into practice what we've heard. So that our works, their Father, may be coupled with our faith, will see us through any difficulties we may experience. I pray that you'll be with us, you'll guide us, take care of all of us now, we pray. As we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, God. God bless Thank you, God. All. Amen. Thank you very much. And we'll join up again next week. Yes? Thank you. Thank you.